Back when Wikipedia was called Encarta and your worth on this planet was decided by the amount of Tazos in your possession, gamers only had two sources for game news, expensive gaming magazines and word of mouth. As far as the magazine went, they mostly focused on walkthroughs, reviews, secrets and letters. Yes, letters from the community. Besides the likes of Shen Long, Google him if you want a really good laugh, it was all very controlled, all very professional and thought out. Word of mouth though, in an age where technology was making dreams a reality and there was no way to prove someone was lying right there and then, that was a recipe for literally anything being true. At least until you spent a good few days worth of game time trying to prove it and realize your friend was full of it the whole time. No, Jeff, I have not forgotten about you telling me that Leatherface was in San Andreas if I booted the game up at 3 a.m., and I never will. To be honest, though, this maelstrom of misinformation and tip trading was pretty damn exciting, and when certain secrets were corroborated, there was nothing better. I kind of missed this gold rush of potential that dominated the early decades of gaming, but boy, did we fall for literally everything. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are nine video game myths we all stupidly believed as kids. Before we begin, I just want to quickly tell you about today's list sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a new RPG that is taking the mobile gaming landscape by storm with almost 10 million players worldwide. And you can kind of see why. Great graphics, strategic gameplay, huge boss fights, an amazing storyline, and over 400 champions to collect and customize. Just check out the detail on those champions. There's something for everyone in this game, and for me, I love that there's so many new skills and abilities to unlock as you go, not to mention that it's turn-based, which is always the best thing on the planet. Raid is getting rave reviews, and with almost 200,000 player ratings, Raid has a near-perfect score on the Play Store right now. The game is growing super fast, and the highly anticipated new update is now live. And with the new player rewards program, you'll get a reward every time you log in for the first 90 days. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on our special links, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, and I will see you there. Number 9. You could play as Knuckles in Sonic 1. Testament to just how much of an instant badass Knuckles looked to be. I mean, come on, he's Sonic, but he's red, with long hair and spiked boxing gloves. That dude was listening to P.O.D. and he didn't even care. The youth of the nation, indeed. Because in the 90s, angst was king. And after Knuckles was introduced in Sonic 3, only three years after the original, we kids fell in love with him so hard, there wasn't a playground the world over that didn't have someone telling you he was secretly playable in the original game all along. Cheat codes, heading to specific parts of the environment, turning the console on at unique times of day, or that one friend of yours who it just worked for, all of this was complete hokum. Number 8. Magikarp can one-hit KO a level 100 Alakazam. Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow. This is so ludicrously specific, it reeks of that one lying kid, who I'm now going to call Dick from now on, trying to make something up that could never be verified without putting in a lot of time. Our very own Adam Cleary confirmed to me that this myth did the rounds at his school too, as it seemed like in the original Pokemon Red and Blue, old Dicky himself realised that Magikarp's completely useless splash was actually one of the best attacks in the game. The rumour went that it only worked on Alakazam, but even a random Google today will net you a handful of fake videos where users attempt to convince the world that OMG, a Magikarp just killed my best Pokemon in one hit. For the love of missing no, give it up. Number 7. The Ghosts of Halo God, I would love this stuff. So back in 2006-2007, a series of videos centering on the Ghosts of Halo started to populate a very nascent form of YouTube. Appearing to show players having regular online multiplayer matches, they suddenly came up against Spartans who not only moved by sliding along the floor with no animation, but they didn't have any player name above their characters. Also, you would die by being too close to them, even though no bullets came out of their guns. To be honest, as I record this script in a completely empty office on the weekend, this is starting to freak me the F out. Creepier still were accounts of players jumping into maps alone, only to turn around and have these ghosts pop up right behind them, or jumping over them, resulting in a death that the game listed as killed by the Guardians. Thankfully, in the years that followed, people would point to network lag as an explanation for the sporadic movement, and The Guardians is the name that early Halo games ascribe a kill to if it can't tell what actually caused your death. How did people die without being shot, though? No one knows, but it's probably lag. Number 6. You could equip the Triforce. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. 
In most installments of The Legend of Zelda, rescuing the titular princess also involves interacting with or chasing down the legendary Triforce. A divine artifact representing and containing the ultimate power of the land, each piece represents courage, wisdom, and power respectively. To this day though, Ocarina of Time is the one outlier in the canon. As many fans swear blind that they acquired the entire Triforce before you're supposed to get a piece of it at the climax of the story. Tons of doctored images still flood the internet, but the general consensus behind why this lie even exists comes from the game's quest status menu. And fair props to the army of liars. That empty slot in the middle of all those medallions does look like it would house the Triforce. Sadly, as data miners and coders have borne out, the Triforce only serves its purpose at the close of the game. But if you've heard the one about Ariana Almondars and the Overture of Sages, that too is a bunch of Hyrulean baloney. Number 5. Sonya and Kano were playable. Mortal Kombat 2. One of my all-time favorite franchises, Mortal Kombat broke a lot of barriers down for fighting games in the early 1990s. This bloody take on 2D head severing was a massive departure from the more family-friendly Street Fighter, and when the sequel hit arcades and home consoles, we found that the evil Shao Kahn had begun his invasion of Earth. Khan had captured fan favorite character Sonya Blade and her nemesis Kano, keeping them chained on the sides of his throne. Fans desperately wanted to believe that either of the pair were playable as they were in the original. And well, who didn't want to see more eye beam laser fatalities? Considering the new playable inclusion of shape-shifting master of disguise Shang Tsung, it was all we needed to run with the notion that Tsung could totally transform into everyone from Sonya to Kano to frickin' Ed Boon if you punched in the right code. Many even speculated that the toasty sound effect that leads to fighting Reptile was also a way to unlock Kano or Sonya, leading to frantic inputs or button combos or tribal sun dancers being randomly busted out mid-fight in case you missed that tiny window. Number 4. The Flagpole Super Mario Bros. Possibly the earliest example of video game playground bull poop being tried on a mass scale, this is as simple as just trying to land on the top of the flagpole at the close of any Mario level in the original NES game. Now, it is actually possible to jump over the flagpole in two very controlled situations. One involves a glitch on World 1-1 that abuses the vertical and horizontal interfacing that occurs when playing on a widescreen TV. And the other, less cheaty way involves using a platform and some particular momentum on World 3-3. Both would take years to be perfected or remotely nailed down, with things like the secret 256 levels idea also being tied to landing on a flagpole, or a hidden firework display that modulates depending on your time remaining when you finish a level. Incredibly, both of these things were true, but when it came to Mario getting his Cirque du Soleil on at the end of any level, that was just never the case. Number 3. Unlocking Nitrous Oxide in Crash Team Racing Oh my sweet, beautiful Crash Team Racing. I think I've put more hours into you than my own marriage. Here's the thing though, I totally believed this as a kid. And a teenager, and all the way up until the remake of CTR was announced, as Beanox then confirmed that Nitrous Oxide would finally be unlockable. What do you mean, I proclaimed. I thought he was always in the original, I was just never fast enough to do it. Part of me even had a blurry as hell memory of unlocking Oxide with a friend using an Explorer cheat cartridge, but it seems more likely that this was a dream I somehow had and then took forward as fact. Point being, and I guarantee I'm not alone, the idea of CTR's big bad eventually being playable was taken as truth back then. And it's kind of breaking my mind realizing that none of that was the case. Number 2. Playing as Luigi in Super Mario 64 Luigi was initially only intended to be a color-swapped version of Mario, but following Super Mario Bros. 2 giving him distinctly different gameplay, appearances in cartoons, and millions of younger siblings being forced to play second fiddle, he was eventually embraced by fans on his own merits. I will also say that I love the snarky, actually very capable in battle Luigi that we've gotten recently in Mario Kart 8 and Mario and Rabbids. I totally predict a twist where Luigi has been making Mario look good this whole time, but that's something for a future release. For now though, back when Super Mario Mario 64 offered no second player option and an unprecedented world of 3D secrets, an entire generation of gamers went hunting for this particular long lost brother. All you have to do is find all the secret stars, or collect certain ones in certain orders, or fire yourself out of that specific cannon to arrive in that specific place. Tracking down Yoshi at the top of the castle didn't help either, as surely this meant that Luigi must be hiding somewhere. Alas, like Mario ever treating his brother with any real respect, it is a big fat nope at least where the original game is concerned. If you want to play as Luigi on this game's levels without a hack, the Nintendo DS port Super Mario 64 DS gives you Yoshi, Mario, Luigi, and Wario. Although Rach and Benji forever label this an abomination and insult to the wonder of the original. So maybe it's best leaving Luigi to hunt ghosts with his gelatinous doppelganger as that thing won't steal his spotlight, but kinda already has.
Number one, Naked Lara Croft. The ultimate showcase of what teenagers will do in the pursuit of some horny ass business, Tomb Raider at least started out as gaming's Indiana Jones. Only unlike Indiana Jones, Lara took us through a world of dig sites and tombs off the back of an overall art direction that attempted to make Miss Croft the sexiest human we'd ever seen. Eyebrow raising at the time and stupidly over the top today, this still somehow morphed into the idea that there must be a way for Lara to get her kid off. Because video games and because that male gaze is an x-ray. Legions of anxious teenagers just couldn't wait to see well, it's hard to say what they would have seen given the limitations of the graphics. Despite the almost immediate rumors that there was some sort of trick or code to get Miss Croft into the buff before skulking around dangerous and exotic landscapes with a combination of guns, nipples, and wolves, it was just never so. Hacks and Nude Raider mods were totally made by unofficial sources, hence there being some images of this stuff out there on the internet today, but as for developers core putting all of this in the game intentionally, hell no. And that is my list of all the various myths that I totally remember trading on the playground as a kid. Let me know down in the comments below what your personal favorites were. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.